most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole country of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. The Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for Amen. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would be your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread on the foot of deadly fire, that we no sinful fall may know. Oh, for the world we are seeing, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life for the day. Walk through the verses with me, please. O oh Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my, my journey and my resting place. And, and I are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, Lord, know it altogether. You, you encompass me if I before. And, and then you are upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go to the Spirit? Or where can I be from the presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, even there, your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I, I say, say surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to light. Even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created in my inmost parts. You need to be together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my soul as well. My, <clears throat> my praying was not hidden from you. When I, I was made in secret and worked in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. And as day by day you were fashioned. When as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O oh God? How great is the sum of them? If, if I count them, them they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in your presence. So that you would slay the wicked, O God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. May they speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do not oppose those who are all who oppose you. Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See, See if there is any way of wickedness in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I've not chosen a scripture reading because the the uh, the address which 
it's going to follow now immediately is itself almost more than a commentary on the passion narrative itself. Would you like to introduce it for us, please? Um, yes, certainly. Uh, we, this week we're looking at stories that were written by David Kossoff. Um, some of you may have experienced his writing in the past. Um, I thought he was well worth reviving. So we're hearing different stories from different perspectives looking on uh, from different people looking on various aspects of Holy Week and the Passion narrative. So thank you. Thank you. I think tonight we're hearing from Malchus, is that right? It's Malchus tonight. He's about 45. He's rather bald. He has a pale, bony face, light hair and eyes, a sharp nose, and a rather pursed mouth with a precise way of speech. It would be as well, I would suggest, for you to understand fully that in the matter of the recent arrest and death of the Galilean, I had no personal animosity toward him at all. None at all. And neither have my colleagues towards the ill-advised followers of Jesus against whom they are at present drafting regulations. We carry out orders. We are servants of the temple with civil authority and influence, civil servants, if you like, where bedrock, foundation, the leaders, the spokesmen, the ministers change, governments change. We do not. It was ever so. It will always be so in civil service. Nothing personal. When my master Caiaphas said some time ago that it would be better for Jesus to die than that the whole nation should suffer and be destroyed, he was speaking good sense as he saw it. As a high priest, he has a difficult job, even with our help. Jesus is dead. The thing is done. Soon he will be forgotten. But there was nothing personal. When Caiaphas made that statement, I don't think he'd ever met or seen Jesus. But miracle workers and faith healers and raisers from the dead can be very disruptive and troublesome. And the Romans are touchy enough on the subject of that my master calls matters religious. Heidegger hates all religion, all priests. High priests in particular, impossible man. Certainly I have reason to be grateful to the late Jesus. He attended to a head injury of mine that could have been most disfiguring. I would like to have repaid him in some way, but it was far too late in the day. Very apt statement there, far too late in the day. And a fact, and what a day too. I would have liked to have spared him at least the flogging, but that was my order of Pilate. A Roman touch. Crucify, but the scourge went first. I'm told that the Galilean prophesied his own death. So did I, friend, so did I. I don't have prophetic powers or second sight, but I have records. I have on record the exact day that one of his closest friends, one of the so-called Twelve, came here to give him to us. I say give, to sell him to us. It's always a money transaction. It's allowed for with a fund, cash, unreceited in silver. We took Jesus in a garden at night. A detail of the temple guard, two officers, mm -hmm. ten men, and the informer to positively identify. We knew that he would be with others and we wanted no mistake. I went along really to see we got our money's worth, Jesus the leader. We were not interested in the 12. Our experience in such matters is that once the ringleader is picked up, the followers stop following and fade away. You're right, they all went into hiding. The big surprise was that one or two of them were armed. Most unexpected. Could have been fatal in my case. When the informer Iscariot had identified by touching, we went forward to make formal arrest. At that moment, 
One of the twelve, a huge bearded man, stepped forward with a sharp sword and nearly took my ear off and was covered in blood. The blow had clubbed as well as cut me. I was dazed. I heard the guard rush forward and a lot of shouting. And then the Galilean's voice, speaking quietly. Someone put a bandage around my head, almost holding the ear back in place. I remember thinking to myself, well, Jesus, if you're such a healer, do me. It was as almost though, as though he had her. He put his two hands up over my two ears and said, it will heal. There will be no pain. He said other things about prophecies coming true. And why were we so busy with gods when we could have picked him up in the temple any time? And was he a bandit or something? I paid little attention to him. I had no pain, but I hate the sight of blood, and I was messy and sticky with it. I left him to the men who took him to the senior high priest, Anas. Anas, my master's father-in-law, the old man we call him, the real power behind the throne, that one. He's been high priest, the high priest, for years and years. He made all of his sons high priests as well. And when his daughter married, his son-in-law Caiaphas as well. Well, anyway, one of the soldiers took me home to the palace of Caiaphas, and I went to my room, changed my clothes, washed away my blood. I was going to change the bandage too, but didn't. Our report said that Jesus had positively cured people by laying on of hands, and he touched me, and certainly the pain had gone. I felt fine. I looked down into the courtyard below my window. The palace guard had made their usual bonfire. It looked cheerful. I saw one of the arrest officers come through the gate on a horse, and I went down. He told me the old man would question Jesus and would send him across to us, to Pythons. The, the officer told me that he left as the interrogation began and that the prisoner and escort would arrive in about two hours. I thanked him and invited him in for a drink. We talked and he was surprised that my wound was giving me no pain, but I seemed unworried by it. He suggested that the garrison medical officer might look at it, perhaps put some stitches in. I refused. He didn't insist. After a while, one of the maidservants came in and told us that one of the twelve was in the courtyard warming himself at the fire. I asked her how she knew. She said she'd been to hear Jesus many times, and the twelve were always with him. She knew them all by sight. Is it the informer, I asked her, Iscariot? She said no. I gather she had no opinion of our informer. Are you sure? I asked her. Did you speak to him? Yes, she said. I am sure. And I did speak to him. He denies it. He says he doesn't know Jesus. She seemed upset. I sent her away. I was amused. It seems a foolish action on the fellow's part, where whoever it is. I looked out of the window. There were quite a few people around the fire, many with their backs to me. I was curious, and I asked the officer to go down. I watched and saw him speak to a rather big man for a minute or two, and then leave him. He came in and went back to his chair. I think the girl is right, he said. In fact, I think it's the man who hit you with the sword. He denies everything, but there's no blood on him. It was dark in the garden, and there was a lot of confusion, and I'm not sure. What do you want me to do? I looked down again at the man. He showed no signs of wanting to run away. He sat hunched, bulky, his back to me. I left it for a while until the officer said he should go down and meet the arrest detail. I went with him. The man had not moved. I went across to him. He stood up. 
he talked to me by a head and a half. He looked down at me, at my bandaged head. <coughs> I wasn't sure. I asked him his name, address, and train. Simon, he said, a best sailor, a fisherman. Galilean, I said, by Jesus of Nazareth. Troublemaker we now have under arrest. I think you must be one of his gang, an armed bodyguard. He was looking across the top of my head. Jesus and the escort were just coming in. I kept my eyes on the big man's face. The good timing was not accidental. I know my job. Well, I said, I don't know what you're talking about, he said. I don't know Jesus. I turned and looked at Jesus. He looked straight at the big man. A sad look, but nothing to prove he knew him. I turned back to the fisherman and saw an astonishing thing. Tears were pouring down his face. He tried to speak twice. Then he turned, ran like a madman across the yard, out of the gate. I let him go. If he is one of the twelve, and the movement, or party, or whatever it is, starts to get out of hand, we shall have him. Shan't charge him with bodily harm or offensive weapon, no point. The air is as new, perfect, no scar, nothing. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your arm. I am the end of the fellow of your hands. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for heaven. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love toward the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and raised with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is at hand. As the night watch looks for the morning, so, so do we look for you, us. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Amen.